Well, back on the farm today. The war on the whitetail has resumed. The hunting licenses just went on sale in the state of Pennsylvania a couple of days ago. So it is time. It is time to prep for tree stand work. I've already been doing a lot of maintenance work on the farm. It's raining today a lot. You can see I'm soaking wet. I've been trimming tree stands with a, a new weapon. Big pole saw here. This is the second one. I blew the first one up. <laughs> I'm here with my buddy. You can probably hear him. Oh, there he is. So yeah, we're trimming tree stands. Are you thirsty? Uh -huh. Is it hot today? Serge, is it hot? No. You wanna lay in that water bowl? <laughs> You're funny. You know what? Here's something. Okay. Trimmed a whole bunch of tree stands. It's starting to really heat up now. The, it rained last night and into this early this morning and it, it, the humidity's just gone through the roof. But uh, it's time for me to go home and wash off quickly because I caught a big poison ivy vine from around one of my tree stands. And I do not have a good reaction to that. Uh, I find what helps is if you wash with Dawn soap, something that kills, gets rid of the oil. Anything that cuts oil or alcohol, if you use alcohol too, uh, that kind of gets rid of the oils from the poison ivy. It's the oil from the poison ivy that gives you the rash and it's, ju it's just miserable, it's miserable. But just a quick video update. We're gonna go home and work on an uh, implement for my tractor for food plot planning. So we'll get to that. I found this little guy laying under the cabin. Such a useful animal. I hope he's eating all the mice that do tunnel their way in there. It's pretty. He's sitting still here just heating up. It's a nice dark color actually. He's gonna absorb it. A lot of the snakes here are dark because we, of course we have winter, so they go into hibernation for winter. But uh He's pretty. Even the rattlesnakes, we get black phase rattlesnakes too because the, the, their black color makes them heat up much more efficiently. And he's not a venomous snake, he is a, a colubrid snake. Such a pretty animal. As you can see, we're fabricating up a, a jack flight here for the back of my tractor. I fabricated this implement for it last week here. It's actually a, a harrow drag. So it's gonna, I already had previously fabricated this hitch for it. But this has a bunch of points, drag points across the back of it, so I'll be able to lift it up off the ground. It's all steel, it's pretty heavy. <laughs> but now I made a frame to go from the back of the tractor. So what I have is, I gotta have a mount welded to the bore here, the lift bore. So then I'll have a manual back to go from here to go to the lift bore. So I'll be able to lift it up or put it down. And then that way the weight of the jack is actually pushing the implement into the ground. So it's not gonna bounce, it's gonna cut into the ground. It's not gonna bounce every time it hits a rock. But I'll be able to manually raise it and lower it with the jack. If I wanted to 
I could have used a linear actuator on it, uh, which is basically an electric solenoid that lifts it up and down. Then I'd have to run wiring and a switch and everything else in it. Electronics can fail. <laughs> this won't fail. Once I get to where I want to use it, it's, it's only for plant for uh, preparing food pots for whitetails. So once I get to where I use it, I'm going to set it to the depth I want to cut at. I only really need to break the surface of the soil to get uh, good soil contact for the seed. So I don't, it's not like I'm running a plow where I'm you know, going to cut four or five inches down into the ground. It's just barely scratching the surface inch inch and a half two inches at most down I want to cut just to break up the surface of the soil so once I engage it I'm just going to use it and then when I'm done with it I will lift it it's not like I'm going to put it down run lift it up put it down run lift it up I'm not going to do that I'm just going to continually run with it but we'll we have yet to test it to see if it works now, I made a lot of modifications to the tractor. I had rebuilt the transmission on this tractor. Uh, it's pretty heavy. It's a, uh, a Craftsman, a 6000 GT garden tractor. Uh, it's hydrostatic drive, forward and reverse. Uh, I have a plow and everything I made for the front of it. Pretty big bulldozer blade, a snow blade. Uh, I made a, mo a lot of modifications to the rear of it to give me better traction. I was running regular turf tires on it and with no weight on the back. And the traction on it was really, really poor. It would just spin the wheels. It wasn't that the machine didn't have enough you know, power. It was it's a 20 horsepower engine in this. So it's got plenty of power, but it just couldn't get that power to the ground. So what I did was uh, my wife ordered me some Bar ag tires here, so which are regular tractor tires, and that in itself greatly improved the the traction in the rear of the tractor. But to go a step beyond that, what I did was when I mounted the tires on the tractor, I put tubes in both the tires, and then I liquid filled the tires. Uh, there's a little over five gallons of washer fluid in each tire, so it makes each tire probably total weight is about 60 pounds a tire it's really really heavy and that weight in that tire that made an absolute huge difference I can drive this tractor up a 45 degree incline in wet grass and it will climb that incline absolutely no problem at all uh, now I still have standard turf tires on the front of it but I am going to get the, t the, the ag tires the bar tires like this you can get them that where they would fit uh, a snowblower or a cultivator, a witch ditch, something like that, where you know it uses a gripped tire rather than a turf saver tire. The turf saver tires are okay if you're running on flat ground and uh, and all you're doing is mowing the grass. But when you're doing ground engagement work, that's a that's a completely different deal. Uh, you have to make some modifications. You can get bolt-on wheel weights that would bolt to the outside of the tire. Uh, you can use those and you can use the liquid fill and the wheel weight that gives you a lot of weight uh, But this this tractor is pretty heavy. I'm gonna say it probably weighs uh, I could I could look it up online it probably weighs somewhere between with the deck on it weighs between Seven to eight hundred pounds something like that. So I, I added an extra hundred pounds to that uh, The heavier it is the better traction it's gonna have so I don't think it'll have any problem dragging this to the ground. There's one, two, three, four, five, six tines on it. And what I did was I welded chisel tips onto the tines. I used regular rebar. And then I welded like chisel cutter points onto it. I actually was gonna cut uh, old lot, like deck blades. And then, cause th those are pretty hard steel. And I could cut them at angles. And the blades are also curved. It would actually look like a miniature plow head. And then I could weld like miniature plow heads to each one of these. but. I'm going to test it first before I go into further modification with it. Uh, as you can see, I make well of this. There's a, there was a pre-mounted frame on the back of this that used to have a bagger attachment on it, and that's what that frame is for. But I bought uh, 
a two inch receiver for an ATV and then I modified it a little bit and it, I bolted it to the back pan of the tractor and then I put a, a quarter inch steel plate and welded it so it's rigid that it, it can put weight, I can put weight on it. Um, and then it had these attachments here for the bars you can see with the pins to hold the bagger and that's what I'm going to make the, make the jack plate from. So hopefully it works. fabricating something like this you always want to make sure you just tack weld stuff on before you go fully welding it on to make sure it fits so tack everything first then make sure everything works then uh, you gotta you know weld it up uh, when you're welding it has a tendency to want to warp the metal so you want to when you're welding it it will pull to one side or the other whichever usually whichever direction you're welding it will pull to avoid that, what you want to do is tack it in a, in a bunch of different spots so that it holds its position where you want it and then seam weld it to fill it, to fill it up. Because otherwise what will happen is that you'll start welding it and it will, it will pull to one side and then something won't be straight and it won't fit. Uh, it, it's a lot of work to grind welds off and have to redo it. You don't want to do that. But this is coming together. Hopefully it works. Time will tell. Last piece going on now, the jack. Let my weld cool off. It's hot today. Now with that, we should have lift. Oh yeah, uh oh, look out now. Look at that. Nice. We are clear of the ground. That's perfect. Clean up my pretty looking wells there. I was using a flux core machine for this. It's a DC. I was running at about 75 amps. Wire speed was what, six, five and a half. I'm using uh, 
035 wire flux core. It's good quality wire. That makes a big difference. You get it's when your flux core welding, you get a little bit of splatter. It's not like uh, MIG welding with shielding gas. That's really clean. You get very little splatter when you're using the argon and the CO2. But this is a really good machine. I like it a lot. The problem with trying to weld outside with a gas machine is that if you have any little sort of a breeze, your weld is not being shielded by the gas. The gas is getting blown away. <laughs> where the flux core is always being shielded. What it does is it actually creates uh, CO2 and that's what shields it, shields the weld. But I'm really happy with it, it works well. You do get a little bit of splatter. You can get products called clean weld. That's a spray where you spray it on the steel and then it stops the splatter from sticking to the steel. Although I don't, I don't really get a lot of splatter from that. It welds pretty clean, so. There's minor splatter, not, nothing major. Nothing that you couldn't get off with a, uh, a flat disc really quick. But that should, really, that should work really good. Now, like I said before, the, the opposite should go with this just as easily as it lifts it up. It's also gonna apply downforce to it when, because it's attached to the tractor. It's mounted solid to the tractor. So, once I have the jack down and I, I jack this into the ground, the weight of the tractor is gonna hold it in the ground. You're gonna have play in the back of it. Of course, it's gonna bounce a little bit, but it's not gonna, you know, ride up out of it, or out of the dirt on you. It'll definitely maintain ground contact. If I want to, I could also weld piece of rebar on here and then put ring weights on it like uh, lifting weights I could do that uh, you know if the weight if th this is not or even this is not enough to hold it into the ground I can always put uh, there's a lot of different things you could do I could put the rebar on it. I could put the power lifting weights on it like dumbbell weights uh, I could m weld a cage on it and put concrete blocks in it if I wanted to uh, I have a big piece of steel as a counterweight, and it probably weighs, uh, I don't know, it's maybe a foot and a half long, it's three inches thick and it's about eight inches deep, and that weighs a lot, it probably weighs 80 pounds. Uh, I could mount that right on this too, and it, it would be make it really heavy, but I wouldn't, definitely wouldn't come out of the ground, but I am pretty pleased with that. That should do the trick. All we got to do now is test it in the field and see how it works. I'll give you a closer look at the teeth and stuff here. And what I did. A closer look at it. The square tube, angle iron, rebar. This is square tubing, same as this, except that what I did was I cut the tips at an angle here. So it's a flat head on it and it's going to shovel into the dirt and rake it up. Put a reinforcement on it. Two inch tube steel, two inch tube steel, two inch tube steel. And you can see the, the hitch I made for the back of the tractor. So this will actually all come off. It's pinned here. It's pinned over there. The five eighth pin in the center there, that will come out. Uh, I can also unhook it here from the mount. This, this is a mount that I made but I bought this mount, but I modified it so that I cross-drilled it so I can take the pin out of it and actually switch it around so I can have the hook vertically or I can have the hook uh, horizontally like this. Here's the jack plate. So now all I have to do is wind it and lift it. Push it down. It's going down now, back to the ground. Now it's in the ground. There's a little bit of slack on it and then that's going to start to push push and bite. It'll actually probably jack the back of the tractor up if I wanted it to. I'm go back the opposite way. This is going to lift it. As you can see.
lifts it right up. Way more than I need. And it's good that there's a little bit of give in the mount. Also the pin here, I don't have that, it's not super, super tight. I got a little bit of play in this. That gives it a little bit of room to jack because it's going to stress the jack. But in theory, it should work. But we will find out. Okay, so as my miniature farm implement over here is drying after I painted it, I'm going to show you something else I was working on. It took me quite a long while. Uh, I rescued this out of a barn belonging to a friend of mine, a good friend of mine. This had sat in the barn, not running for 15 years, about give or take a few years. I uh, had an engine problem and of course sitting it had a lot of other problems. Uh, I'll reveal it and show you what it is. That beauty. This is a Simplicity. It's a 6216. Uh, it's parent company is Alice Charmers. Simplicity was a, like the, the garden end of Alice Charmers made their smaller equipment. And I put a lot of work into this. Uh, of course, it didn't run when I got it. And like I said, I've been sitting for a very long time. It's a Briggs uh, 16 horse, cast iron horizontally opposed twin cylinder. It has a cast iron diff with a limited slip. Uh, it's a manual transmission. And I completely stripped this tractor right down to the frame. There was nothing left. The seat is original, the fuel tank is original, the center console, the steering wheel is original, all the sheet metal is original, but of course I repainted everything on it. Uh, it is original Alice Strummer's orange, as close as I could get. Uh, as far as I know, I don't know the exact build date of this tractor, but it was early to mid 80, so it's over 30 years old, 35 years old. really runs well now. I've, I've done a lot of engine work to it. One of the cylinders was seized in it. I freed the cylinder up. Uh, I put head gaskets on it. I checked all the valves and stuff on the head of the part. I put new engine seals in it. The, the seals were completely dry rotted. It was leaking oil really badly out the, uh, the, main, the main crankshaft seal when I did get it to run. I repainted the wheels on it. I took the deck off stripped the deck down one of the uh, the turrets in the deck was seized up and it wouldn't run so I repaired that it was it was actually seizing the engine when I would engage the PTO here uh, it would seize the engine up it would stop it that's how, how badly jammed it was but it all, it all works well now uh, I repainted the engine covers and everything on it painted the engine cover to match the tractor <laughs> and then I left the sides of it black. This is an air-cooled engine so it uses the fan on the top to suck air in and then it flows the air around the engine on both sides. The cylinder heads have cooling fins on it like a motorcycle. You can see the intake here, the carburetor up here, the fuel pump is up here. Uh, it's got the, the chrome air cleaner cover on it. Put a new fuel filter on it, new spark plugs in it, put a new coil on it. Uh, like I said, I freed up the pit, this piston that was stuck in it. it. Initially, when I got it and I got it running and got it started, I, I was lucky when this machine stopped working. Uh, there was no ethanol in the fuel. We got straight gasoline. There was no ethanol in it at all. Now, of course, everything has 10% ethanol in it. Uh, and that really helped it because the carburetor was pretty clean. There was a little bit of gum in it, but not much. Uh, I worked the carburetor over on it, cleaned it out. And then subsequently I've run uh, carburetor cleaner in the gasoline. And I also run stable in the gasoline. Uh, I only run high octane gasoline. In my small engine stuff, I only try to run high end octane fuel. If I can get uh, zero ethanol fuel, I will. And I'll use that because it's much better for it, especially if you store it. 
Uh, here, unless like my other tractor where I have the snow plow on it, I have a snow blower for it, so I can use it in the winter time. Uh, they get stored over the winter. They don't. They sit for months at a time uh, when you're not cutting grass. This is a really good tractor. It was a shame. It's all steel. It would have been a real shame to see it go to the junkyard. So I invested a little bit of money in it and a lot of time in it and got it back to its original condition. And uh, it runs really well. I'm really pleased with how it came out. This also you can get implements for it. I actually have a sickle bar mower attachment for it. Uh, I have a snow blower attachment for it. It has a 50 inch deck on it. So you can, and it's an all steel deck. Uh, you get, they don't make equipment like this today. You get, uh, if you go to Lowe's or you go to Home Depot or anywhere like that, unless you're gonna buy uh, a very high end Husqvarna or a very high end John Deere subcompact tractors, uh, or uh, Mahindra or you know uh, Kubota something like that that's the only way you're going to get a piece of equipment like this and they are really 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 expensive five figure expensive they're, they're very expensive and the implements to go with them are expensive so I thought this was really worth saving and I, I'm really pleased with how it came out it's amazing what you can do with a bit of elbow grease in a rattle can right <laughs> All right, thanks for watching. We're going to hopefully test out that uh, farm implement on Big Green over there and uh, see how that works and get our food plot in. Before you know it, hunting season's going to be here. All right, we'll see you on the next one. <laughs>